There's a building in Berlin that scares me and makes me feel uncomfortable every time I walk past it. Nevertheless, or precisely because of this, I would like to present it in this video. We will look at the second largest building in Berlin, one of the largest construction projects ever in the Federal Republic of Germany. It opened in 2019. Four times the size of the Federal Chancellery, built on an area where the Reichstag building would fit eight times. To show where the building is located, we first take a look at the immediate surroundings. We start at Kieler Bridge on the berlin spandauer Schifffahrtskanal. The sign to the left Mitte indicates that we are entering former East Berlin and are right here on the former border strip. To our left is the area of the hospital of the German Armed Forces, the Bundeswehr Krankenhaus, with a helicopter landing pad. In addition to soldiers and civilians, members of the federal government and the German Bundestag are also treated at this hospital. It is an academic teaching hospital of the Charité as well. Originally a garrison hospital was built here in the mid-19th century. Later it was a hospital for the Berlin police. After the war, the German People's Police and the Ministry of the Interior took it over. One of the tasks of the hospital, which was located directly on the border to West Berlin, was to admit people who were injured during an escape attempt in the area of the Berlin Wall. Some of the victims of the Berlin Wall died here. It's hard to imagine that here, where people are walking, once stood the wall. In front of us the former watchtower Kieler Straße, one of the very few watchtowers that still exist in Berlin. Here is a memorial to Günter Litvin, the first victim of the wall. I will go into his tragic story in another video. Once again the view of the main building of the German Armed Forces Hospital and then we immediately turn to the new headquarters of the Federal Intelligence Service, the BND. This video is about the architecture, so only two sentences about the BND itself. Along with the Federal Office for the Protection of the Constitution and the Office for Military Counterintelligence, the Federal Intelligence Service is one of Germany's three Federal Intelligence Services and the only German intelligence agency responsible for foreign reconnaissance. Like the NSA in the United States, the SWR in Russia or the MI6 in Great Britain. Subordinate to the Federal Chancellery, the BND employs approximately 6,500 people. Of these, 3,200 currently work at the new headquarters in Berlin. The decision to move the headquarters from Polach near Munich to Berlin was made in 2003. Why? Let the BND itself answer. Whether our analysts are called to the Foreign Office for a crisis meeting or are attending a conference in Jakarta, Indonesia on the illegal arms trade in Asia for a foreign intelligence service, proximity to the government in Berlin is just as crucial as a global presence. After the headquarters in Pullach near Munich was rather hidden in the former Nazi garden settlement, the Reichssiedlung Rudolf Hess, the importance of the service is now to be duly represented in Berlin. The basic idea was to signal more openness and proximity to the democratic center in Berlin. The competition design by the architectural firm Kleihus and Kleihus was particularly praised for the fact that the building would fit in well with its surrounding. So let's see. Construction began in 2006. The official opening took place with an address by German Chancellor Angela Merkel 13 years later, on February 8, 2019. There are three building parts on the site. In front of us the North Building, here are the Technical and Logistics Center and the Parking Garage. Central supply is via the security gate. At the beginning of construction, secret construction plans were stolen. According to the official statement of the BND, however, this did not affect the heart of the headquarters, but only the North Building, and therefore there was no need to redesign the complex. But it was still extremely embarrassing for a secret service. 
For the heating, cooling and power supply of the property, the combined heat and power plant was built in front of us. The BND complex is therefore not dependent on the public grid. In the area surrounding the BND, a lot of renovation and new construction has also taken place in recent years, especially in the high price segment. We will see the main building in a moment, therefore a few figures. The nine-story, three-wing main building offers 260,000 square meters or 2,800,000 square feet of office space, equivalent to 35 soccer fields with 5,200 rooms. It has 14,000 darkened and tap-proof windows, each 75 centimeters or 2.5 feet wide. There are three windows per standard office which is equipped with two height adjustable desks and four monitors. 135,000 cubic meters of concrete and 20,000 tons of steel have been used. 186,000 miles of cable have been laid, including 12,500 miles of fiber optic cable and 6,200 miles of copper cable. For safety reasons, the distance to the street is 100 feet. With the exception of the two-winged entrance area, on this side of the moat. To make the building look monumental rather than colossal, it has been lowered somewhat. There are no secret cellars, it only stands recessed on a plinth. The construction cost amounted to 1.1 billion euros. 720 million had been planned. Including relocation costs, this comes to 1.5 billion euros. So, before I get to the critics and supporters of the complex, a look at the eye-catching building opposite. While it almost looks as if the buildings opposite are retreating before the overpowering construction of the BND, the residential building called the Fire stretches out towards it, almost as if it wants to cut the BND building in half. The new building opposite the main entrance of the BND was constructed according to plans by the US star architect Daniel Liebeskind. 72 apartments in the upper price segment have been built here, with a supermarket on the first floor. It is Liebeskind's first residential building in Berlin. And he became famous worldwide for the Jewish Museum in Berlin. All the apartments in the project are grouped around an intensively landscaped courtyard. The apartments, all of which have balconies and terraces, are equipped with underfloor heating, fireplaces, wooden floorboards and a floor-level shower in the bathroom. A special feature is that the shimmering silver tiles of the facade are also found on the walls of the bathrooms. All the apartments were sold quickly, including to international buyers, with prices ranging from 4,150 to 15,000 euros per square meter. The 2,500 square feet penthouses cost around 4 million euros. The building is characterized by its Liebeskind-typical buckled folded ceramic facade, which was coated with a specially made metal powder with titanium. In this way, the building appears in different shades when the light falls on it in different ways. It should remind of a polished gemstone, a sapphire. Daniel Liebeskind describes this apartment building as a kind of declaration of love to Berlin. I named the building Sapphire because it fits the city and its people. A Sapphire, he says, is not only something pretty, but also rough, hard, durable and resistant. In other words, just like Berlin and the Berliners. Many thanks for that, Mr. Liebeskind. If you would like to spend some nights in one of the apartments, you can do so via Airbnb. The minimum rental period is 10 nights for 3,150 euros. But back to our building. Of course, there is also art on the building. On display in front of us in the prestigious driveway is a rust red 31 by 65 by 30.8 feet monolithic body made of cotton steel, created by artist Stefan Sus, who describes his work as follows. As a self-sufficient, alien, unfathomable thing, the sculpture gives a subtle hint to the function of the BND. Uncover the unknown, and preserve its own secrets. Quite obvious, isn't it? I looked up what cotton steel is. Cotton steel is a weather-resistant structural steel. It forms on the surface through weathering. Under the actual rust layer, 
a particularly dense barrier layer of adherent sulfates and phosphates, which protects the steel part from further corrosion. The main building has been frequently and severely criticized from the beginning. As an example, I would like to quote from an article by Gerhard Matzig, graduate engineer, editor and architecture critic at the Süddeutsche Zeitung, under the headline, New BND headquarters in Berlin, the build accident, he wrote. The BND calls its new headquarters open and arrived in the middle of society. This is an annoyance, even greater than the megalomaniac building itself. The openings of the facade, being infinitely repetitive and uniformly narrow in dimension, could be attributed to a delirious 3D printer whose, whose controls ran amok. The 14,000 windows could also be 14,000 ambushes. The BND headquarters has been in Berlin for so long now, behind its dreadful martial fence and a dreadful Kafka-esque facade dress that one could always get an idea of its neighborhood compatibility. Result, the building is a built accident of an idea that was wrong from the beginning. The brute building, now standing in the middle of the city, affects its surroundings like a circular saw. The hugely oversized facility, which stacks rather conventional two desk offices into an agent's cage for about 4,000 employees, Saws the whole area apart and ruins neighborhoods and visual relationships. In a small scale built environment, the homogeneous structure, fortress like, is a new sovereign, impermeable, repellent, defensive, dominant. The BND itself writes imposing architecture, art on the building, and the visitor center are only the visible features of our headquarters. Behind the shimmering gold facade lies state-of-the-art technology and, as at all our locations, probably the largest number of different experts within the federal administration. The BND is said to be the only intelligence agency in the world to run a visitor center. It was opened in April 2019 with a multimedia and an interactive exhibition. On 4,300 square feet, the BND informed there about its mission, its work and its control. With more openness, it wants to reduce resentment towards its work and recruit new employees. Among these exhibits are the BND file of Erich Honecker, former East German State Secretary, and satellite reconnaissance images of North Korea. Also located in the South Building, designed by the architectural firm Lehmann from Offenburg, is the Center for Intelligence Training and Education a joint project of the BND and the Federal Office of the Protection of the Constitution. In addition to workshops and chemistry laboratories, 110 apartments in a dormitory are available. I also found a well-meaning text written after an exclusive walkthrough on the occasion of the presentation of Jan Kleihu's book about the project. He and the president of the BND, Bruno Karl, wanted to show what they are proud of. It says, The mighty building, with its endlessly repeating 14,000 narrow windows, had come under extensive criticism. But, on this day, and seen up close, the skepticism in the audience turns to admiration. The repetition of the facade becomes sublimity. The colossality becomes monumentality commented the otherwise critical architectural historian Adrian von Butler. Jan Kleihus, the architect, regrets that the building could not stand directly on the street for safety reasons. He calls the complex a machine, a building that functions superfast horizontally and vertically. He places his architecture under the concepts of monumentality and poetry. I stand by the monumentality, stresses Jan Kleihus calmly. It should be a beautiful building that works, he says cryptically. By beautiful, Kleihus means above all the combination of two motives. The large scale of the building, in whose stately outstanding gate buildings he sees the graininess of Berlin reflected, and the detail whose perfection already reaches poetry. Not only the alloy of the metal facade shimmering in the daylight, but also every door handle and floor joint in this building are aesthetically 
planned. Let us quote another newspaper article. BND headquarters, the belief in perfect architecture. Inside too, the rectangular grid prevails, as can be seen from the photos released by the BND, which Jan Kleihus was allowed to publish in a really beautiful architectural book. Perfect are the ingenious details, the merging of wood and stone, and marble and concrete, the lamps and the railings in the endlessly long, straight corridors, and the monumental hall with its many-story pillared walkway. Here, the almost fetishistic belief in a perfect architecture that stands above the times, which has found its symbol in the endlessly repeatable, supposedly abstract rectangle, becomes apparent. The Chancellor's office alone can compete with the BND headquarters among Germany's newer political buildings. A breach of the rules, especially since the BND headquarters, in contrast to the comparatively open Chancellor's office, is one giant declaration of mistrust in the claim of every human being to be perceived as an individual. This architecture tells the same story over and over again. Just don't stand out. Just don't think against the grain. Just don't be yourself. The individuality of the employees is systematically made a secondary matter. Hopefully, soon an ivy or a vine will grow somewhere up the smooth facades to give this monument of order madness at least a touch of living anarchy. And hopefully the BND is not internally as mind-numbingly, monotonously structured as it now presents itself to the outside world. There are still two places without windows. From there the building can still be extended. And again, art on the building. Two 72 feet high palm trees made of steel with brown trunks and green leaf crowns. The work of art is called Zero Degrees Latitude and was designed by Ulrich Brischke. It was inspired by radio masks disguised as trees. It is an urban legend that eavesdropping technology is hidden in it. It should be briefly mentioned that there was another mishap during construction. In 2015, unknown person dismantled five water taps on the fourth to six floors of the new building at the guarded construction site. The escaping water flooded parts of the BND building. The moisture penetrated false ceilings, cable ducts and the ventilation system. A ceiling broke down. The damage ran into the millions and delayed completion. Whether it was theft or sabotage has not yet been answered. Just to mention it, the largest building in Berlin is still the now defunct Tempelhof Airport. Normally I go into the history of a place at the beginning. This time I would like to do that afterwards. From 1851 to 1918, the barracks of the Guard Fusilier Regiment of the Prussian Army were located here on Chausseestraße in Berlin. The regiment's semi-official name was Die Maikäfer. In 1915, Hans Leib served with the Guard Fusilier Regiment. In the guard room of the Maikäfer barracks, he is said to have written the song Lily Marlene before leaving to the Eastern Front. On November 9, 1918, the first day of the November Revolution, demonstrators attempted to break down a barracks gate. After they succeeded, they stormed into the barracks yard. In the process, an officer shot and killed the innkeeper Richard Gattlatte the mechanic Franz Schwenkler and the toolmaker and spartakist Erich Habersat. After World War I, the barracks were used by the Prussian police and the parade ground was turned into a police sports field or police stadium. During the Second World War, the barracks were destroyed and then demolished. From 1950, the Walter Ulbricht Stadium was built there and in May 1951, the Kesselstraße was renamed Habersaatstraße. With an initial spectator capacity of 70,000, later 50,000, the stadium was one of the largest athletics and soccer stadiums in East Germany. After its renovation in 1973, on the occasion of the 10th World Festival, the stadium was renamed in Stadium of the World Youth. Stadion der Weltjugend. 
Between 1975 and 1989, the final of the National Soccer Cup was held here. In addition, the GDR, the East German national team, used the arena for 13 official international matches. The stadium was demolished in 1992 after unification as part of Berlin's bid for the 2000 Summer Olympics. As is well known, the bid failed miserably. And in the following years, the area was used as a facility for golf, beach volleyball and mountain biking, among others, until 2006, when the construction of the BND headquarters began.